Okay, so this is how we make a rubber. This is the right way to make a French polisher's rubber. It is not what I've seen many videos on YouTube of a little piece of cotton wadding inside a bit of cotton squirted with a bit of French polish, a bit of shellac and then made into a little pantsy bag like this which is that's rubbish. Right, forget that. This is the right way to make a rubber. This is cotton wadding. Uh, it's roughly sort of 12 inches by 9 inches but it doesn't matter. A square of cotton wadding. That's going to be the fad. So this is the fad part and on the outside of it here is the cotton which makes the rubber. This is cotton cloth, pure cotton cut into 9 to 12 inches depending on the size of the rubber you're going to make. Uh, my hands are fairly small but I'm going to make a larger rubber. This is going to be for Will here in the workshop. He's going to use this uh, and I don't want to waste it because it's going to be charged full of French polish which is expensive stuff. Right so let's get making it. Let's make the fad first. I'm just going to pick this cloth up. I'm going to fold it in on itself. I'm just going to keep on folding it in on itself till I find the right sort of point. I'm massaging it around. I'm going to make it into a pear shape. That is a fad. It will also be the shape of the rubber when we finished. This will be charged with with polish a mess. So let's let's do that. Let's just going to reform it a few times. It takes a little while to get used to. I'm making a new rubber with a new fad. It does take a little bit of practice. Right. Here's some transparent or special pale polish. I'm just going to charge the cloth. It's going to take quite a lot. So. In it goes. Top and bottom. I want it to be soaked. I'm going to put in a little bit of methylated spirits just to help it. Right. Okay. You probably haven't got one of these, but a piece of A4 paper will do it. This is an onion board you can buy um, from car suppliers that they use it for their paints. I'm just going to form the shape. The reason we're placing it down, banging it down onto this board is because I want to push and move the polish. You see it coming out here, look. I'm going to pick it back up again. I want to move it around the fad and start to create a face. I'll charge it some more. Again, a little bit more meths, not too much. That's better. You can see me squeezing out the polish but I'm going to pick it back up again. Again. I want to make a pear shape. I'm trying to get a point. There has to be a point to the fad. And it, it comes into a pear. Look. It's starting to happen. As the rubber is used over time, that shape will really develop. And what will happen is it will also form the shape of the person's hand who uses it, who makes it and then it becomes personal to them so the rubber will become personal to the user. You should be able to pick a rubber out and know well that's my rubber, it fits upon my hand. I'm trying to get that point, I want to get that point right here. Okay. Right, so we have the basic shape of a fad. Now here's the cotton cloth that creates the rubber. This one's about, I think it's about 12 inches each side. I'm going to lay it 
on the face at the angle at point so corner doesn't matter which corner but one the corner is up on my arm and the other corner obviously is pointing away now I am going to just put a little bit of mess because this is a brand new rub and I want to my hands are sticky with the polish I want to be able to grab hold of that fat underneath I'm not going to squeeze it to death I'm just placing it into my left hand which frees up my right and then I'm going to pull down and pull underneath there pull another section of the cloth fold it underneath and there's a flat edge to the rubber there should be a point down here starting to form I'm going to help that point form by okay so here we have our rubber I want to demonstrate why it has this shape why we have this point rather than just a round bag and the reason is and I'll show you here is a draw out of a tall boy or a chest on chest that we're polishing right now in the workshop and I'll demonstrate why you need a point right okay and the reason is wood has corners <laughs> well certainly furniture and I want to get into that corner so I'm going to start off here with that little pencil bead and I'm going to apply my rubber and come off there and again I want to get into the corner that is why we have a point here this point will get more defined the more this rubber becomes used and shaped and held I won't do too much because Will's going to take command of this rubber and he'll change the style of it in his hand but that point will become more more obvious and you need that to be able to control your rubber and put it exactly where you want to put it pulling down my finger goes in folds around the back you can see the point starting to happen I haven't let go of anything I'm not squeezing it to death and then going to grab the remaining cotton twist it around turn it around still holding it in my hand not losing anything and there is a basic rubber shape I'm going to force it into the shape I want by hitting it down onto the board and again soaking up the polish it creates a flat face what we don't want is those creases you see in there it needs to be tight and there needs to be a point so this needs to be repeated probably three or four times just to get that shape starting to happen it's quite a big rubber this nice flat face there's a fad fully charged in there with French polish and methylated spirits ready for me to start working I'm going to do it taking off again this time I'm going to open it up there's the fad I'm going to charge it with some more polish a bit more mess again I'm not squeezing it to death just pull that skirt back underneath there gently pull that hold everything in your hands don't don't loosen off get that point going hold it around twist and twist
there you start to see there was a point forming there's a lovely arrow head there so it, and it's starting to get that pear shape a few more times and we'll have a perfect rubber ready to go and start French polishing that is the correct way to hold it in your hand I'm not squeezing it this is the reserve of French polish it's like a reservoir of French polish and methylated spirits this is what comes out not one of those little silly little small little things that you see everyone else using and pouring it on the table it comes from the rubber this is what you will use and there's enough polish in here probably to do a table well almost the size of this bench I would have said there's almost enough polish in here to do that at least to get it up to a stage before we need to recharge it again but hopefully got an idea of how to make French polish rubber now storage of your rubber now you've made it what do you do with it because if you leave it on the side it will dry out and that's a huge waste of money and your time because it holds quite a lot of polish so what you do is we have them in the workshop is store it in an airtight container there's an old one in there place it in airtight and it will keep just like that for the next time if it is a little bit sticky with time just charge it with a little bit of meths or squirt a little bit of meths over the cotton on the face of the rubber just squirt a little bit of meths over the face and rub off any dirt but you want to keep this these can last for months and months and months right the other thing I was going to show you is a fad there's a fad in there but this is a fad that we use in the workshop it's with our buffing cloth and you can buy this online on our website there it is and it's exactly the same principles I've just shown you with the cotton wadding this is stockinette you can roughly fold it over like that pick it up move it around in your hands and shape it into a pear shape again and the same process I'm going to put a little bit of meths this time doesn't really matter and then charge it with polish this is transparent or special pale polish it can be garnet polish it can be any polish you choose this is our preferred polish really giving this a good charge letting all that polish soak into the stockinette squeeze it out let me just move that rubber over the way Yeah, look at that nice big flat face I've got to that fad and this would be good for your initial application of French polish you can use a stockinette fad like this and just in straight lines cross with the grain and build up a layer of French polish before you start bodying but this is if I start shaping this a bit more you end up with a nice pear shape which will naturally happen again it's the same hand position as I have with the rubber so I can start to French polish with this and again all the reserves of French polish are held within the stockinette I hope that uh, makes it easier for you there you go sticky hands okay so you've seen me make this rubber if you go to gilboys.co.uk or look at YouTube you'll see me French polishing demonstrate how we French polish here in the workshop um, it's uh, something that we've been asked about a lot so take a look at gilboys.co.uk or look at our YouTube channel